Here we are at acceleration part four, and this one we're going to look at the idea of displacement. So displacement is how far you've gone, or um, it could be said how, how much ground you've covered. Um, and so in the last couple of videos, we talked about um, acceleration and velocity. And, and so if you're accelerating and you've got velocities, well, you're covering ground and you're moving. And so if we know an acceleration, if we know velocities, um, we should also be able to easily figure out how much ground we've covered. So um, in the last video, we sort of left off and we took um, this equation right here, which is the average acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. And we rearranged that to solve for final velocity. So change in velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial. So we took that and out of this equation, we derived the equation that velocity final equals velocity initial plus the average acceleration times the change in time. And so, and so what about displacement? Is, is displacement in there? Um, well, it turns out it is. Um, and so, oops, there we go. I've put that over the top of my other thing. That's okay. Uh, displacement is in that equation. So here's our velocity time graph. And, and uh, like we said, um, we have been looking at uh, the velocity time graph in the sense of, of, of solving for acceleration because the slope of a velocity time graph is your acceleration because acceleration is the velocity uh, changes over time. And so then this is going to show velocity changing and this is going to show the amount of time. Now what if I was to, to ask, okay, so what is the displacement? Well, displacement is the amount of time covered, so, um, or the amount of ground covered. So let's say I had a, um, a graph that had no acceleration, so my velocity was constant over time. So, um, so let's say it just went along like that. <laughs> it's not a very straight line, but um, let's see if I can go ahead and fix that for you. So, so if it's constant like this, let's say that that's two, and let's say, you know, one, two, you know, three, four. So we've got four seconds here. So if I have a constant velocity of two meters per second for four seconds, well, how much ground have I covered? Well, it's just simply two meters per second times four seconds, right? So I will have covered eight meters. So that's pretty simple, and, and, and that should easily make sense to anybody, right? If I'm going um, two meters per second, how much ground do I cover in a second? Two meters. Another second adds another two, four. So if I went four seconds, I'm up to eight. But if you look at that right here, what that actually is, is the, the area of this graph. So, so the area of this graph is actually the displacement or how much ground was covered. So this is the displacement right here. So it can be said that the initial velocity times the change in time, which is what we did right here, equals the change in displacement. Now, um, and I'm actually going to write this like that, equals the change in displacement. So now, now what about something like this? Because um, we have an initial velocity, which is two meters per second, but we not only have an initial velocity, we have a changing velocity beyond that. So we have that initial velocity to start with, which is always going to be there, but then we're adding to that velocity every second. So how do we figure out the displacement when we have an acceleration? Um, well, let's go back to our, um, to our equation that we looked at last time, which was a derivative of our first equation. And so this is where we left off last time, right here. So velocity final. So, so here we go. Here we have the initial velocity, and we have the change in time. But we also have an acceleration, right, which is causing um, an, an even greater displacement than just the initial velocity times the change in time would. Um, and so what we need to do is to take the initial velocity times the change in time and add to it basically add to it whatever this acceleration is going to do. So let's look at it graphically here. So what, the way that we do that is um, let's break this up into a rectangle here and a triangle here. 
And all we need to do is, because we just showed that displacement is the area under a velocity time graph, right? So all we need to do is we need to calculate the area of this, and we need to calculate the area of this, and essentially add them together. And once we've done that, we will have found um, the displacement. So let's go ahead and look at what that would take. So in order to calculate the area of these two things, we're going to have to, um, to, to start with this. So let's say um, the change in displacement equals um, the area of the triangle. So area of the triangle on top and plus the area of the rectangle. So let's, let's try to figure out what these two are. Well, the area of rectangle is going to be easy. It's just going to be the initial velocity times the total change in time. So um, the change in displacement is going to equal the initial velocity. So let's say velocity initial times the change in time right there. Plus, um, plus we have to figure out what this is. Well, this is a triangle. To solve for the area of a triangle, it's one half the base times the height. So um, the base here is easy, that's just going to be the time, so we're going to have change in time, change in time for sure, and we know we're going to have one half, so it's going to be one half times um, the change in time times the, the height. Now what is this height? Well this height right here is a change in velocity, so the height is actually the velocity initial minus the velocity final, right? So it's, it's whatever has changed in here, and so this is a uh, you know, essentially the difference between that and that. So we could say that um, times the change in velocity. So to solve for the displacement, all we need is the, uh, the initial velocity times the change in time plus one half the change in time times the change in velocity from here to here, from the initial to final. Um, now, um, we can take that just one step further because acceleration equals, or average acceleration, because let's say maybe we don't know all of these velocities. But maybe we know we can calculate from this, or maybe we know what the um, constant acceleration is. And so let's add a few more components into this. So if we had um, go all the way back to our first equation, we talked about the change in velocity over the change in time. And so if you see here, look at that. There's our change in velocity and change in time. So um, what we could do is we could rearrange this. Sorry, that uh, is sloppy. We could rearrange this to say the change in velocity equals. So what is the change in velocity? Well, if we rearrange that, the change in velocity is going to equal acceleration times the change in time. Right? So we could take this change in velocity and we could insert that in there if we don't know maybe the final velocity um, in this situation. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and rewrite this. So now the change in displacement equals the initial velocity times the change in time. That's going to give us the area of this rectangle right here, plus one half times the change in time times the acceleration times the change in time. Well, if you notice here, we're multiplying change in time twice. So let's just go ahead and change that to change in time squared. So we're going to take that and we're going to rewrite that. We're going to say the acceleration times, um, and I'm just, rather than writing that change symbol, because time is uh, always changing in that one direction, I'm just going to say time squared. So, so now this is actually going to give us an answer for the total displacement or the total ground covered when we have an acceleration and when we have an, an initial starting velocity. And of course, if our initial starting velocity is zero, we can still work with this, but that would just make this zero and would essentially just cancel out this part. And so we could find our change in displacement if we started from zero and we just would only have to calculate this portion of the equation. All right, well, let's go ahead and, uh, and clear this page and uh, sort of, of, of rewrite that um, up here. And, and let's see what components also we can pull out of that. So the change in displacement we just figured um, 
was the um, a velocity initial times the time, right? Plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. All right, I don't want this to look like a plus symbol there. So there's time and time. So there we are. Um, now, now, what is displacement? Displacement, remember, is your, your, your total ground covered. So displacement could actually be rewritten as the displacement final minus the displacement initial. So um, where you started and where you ended up is going to be your total displacement or your total ground covered. And so then we could say that, you know, and then equals the rest of that right up there. Um, and so then we could also rearrange this and take this over here and, and just move this on this side to solve for displacement final. So this would allow you to find, where's my final position? Given any acceleration, um, where am I gonna end up? Where's my final uh, displacement or my final position in this sense? Um, and so that's really, really handy because um, say you're you know, shooting a ball. You want to know the exact position that that, that ball is going to land, right? Maybe uh, you want to know and, and get this perfect. You want your, your final resting place to be exact. And so this is how you would solve for that. Um, so there, there's a ton that you can do. And remember, this, all this relates back to, and we just simply took all of this out of this original equation right here. So all of this comes out of here. And we've der derived all of that out of here. And looking at it graphically, I think, um, helps to make a lot more sense of it all. All right, so, um, so our, our, our final displacement is going to equal our initial displacement. This was minus initial, so now we're plus initial on this side. So plus um, the velocity initial times the time plus one-half the average acceleration times the time squared. Um, and, um, or, and if you wanted to just, you know, make this more official, you could say time final squared. Um, and then over here, you could also say time final, and that would probably help to make this not look like a plus sign. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah, see, that's why I need to do that, because that looks so much like a plus sign that I just labeled the plus sign as time final. There we go, all right there. So, um, so final time. So let, let's use that little sub f in order to, to describe that. So, so here's my equation. So look at what I've got here. If I, if I knew you know, my initial starting point, if I knew my initial velocity, and if I knew my total time and my constant acceleration, I could find the point that I finally land at. Um, so, so let's say that um, I don't know some of those things. Let's say that um, I want to solve for my final velocity. Um, so if I was to solve for my final velocity, there's a couple of different things that I could do. Um, so if I, if I take this and I, and I rewrite it by substituting um, time final um, for um, what it equals, because time final right, from my original equation, uh, which, is, which is right here, velocity final uh, equals um, velocity initial plus the acceleration times the time final, okay. Um, if I take that, I could isolate out uh, time final, and I could say time final equals the velocity final minus the velocity initial divided by the acceleration. And all I did was rearrange that to solve for time final. But see, now what I could do is I, if I don't know my time, I could insert that in there for my time, but I could solve for my time if I know my acceleration and my velocities. So I could eliminate the need for that variable. So then if I was to rewrite this equation to solve for that, I could say this. I could say the displacement final equals the displacement initial shouldn't be a plus uh, the velocity initial and I'm going to insert this in for time final so I'm going to draw a little thing here to minus velocity initial divided by the average acceleration plus one half times the average acceleration and then of course I had another time final squared over here so I'm going to write velocity final minus velocity initial divided by average acceleration and have that squared. 
Okay, so now look at, I've, uh, I've eliminated and continued to eliminate more and more and more just simply by doing substitution. And actually, this whole equation is actually all in here. So it's actually nothing new. We've just, took it, we've just taken and saying this equals this and this equals this. So I'm going to substitute in the things we know in order to essentially solve for these unknowns. Um, and so there's a lot that you can do with this. Now, um, this is a really, really handy equation, for example, if you want to find um, the final velocity. So if I was to take this equation and I was to simplify it down and solve just for final velocity, um, now, there's a whole lot of rearranging and moving around that you'd have to do to do that, so I'm going to skip that, and I'm just going to write it out. But you can see here's velocity final. If I took that and I derived out of this an equation that starts off with velocity final equals, um, it would actually be velocity final squared. It would end up um, equals velocity initial squared. So I've got that over here. Velocity initial squared uh, plus... Uh, 2 times the average acceleration uh, times the displacement final minus the displacement initial. Now this equation would come in handy if, um, if all you knew in your initial e equation was your, um, your starting distance and your, and your, um, your, uh, your velocity initial and your average acceleration. If you knew those, you could find your, um, your final velocity. And um, so, so by just knowing these, these initial um, conditions, you could, you could solve for, for all of that. Um, and uh, this one right here would come in handy if you were looking for a final displacement. So if you were if you're wanting to solve for a final displacement um, and you knew your initial starting point and you knew your initial velocity, you could find, um, and then of course always you know your average acceleration, you could find your, your final displacement. So this equation, this equation, and this equation right here will essentially solve for you just about everything, at least we have in this chapter and in multiple chapters to come. So, uh, so I hope this helps to, to, to get you to understand that all of these equations are actually just derivatives of, of each other, and they're all actually found within this one equation, which is acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So out of this little thing, we can pull all of this stuff, and we can solve for all of these different things. So in the, in the videos to come, I'm going to go ahead and, and use these equations in order to solve uh, some, some problems. So stay tuned.